Mr Kimput. There was a request that has been declined on the basis that the matter had a separate consultation process attached to it. Uh, item number seven, local board input, there is none. Item number eight, there is uh, no extraordinary item being referred to me. So we come to item number nine, and if I can ask uh, Ollie St Andreas, um, Head of Health, Safety and Wellbeing, to come to the table. Um, we have the quarterly health and safety performance report referred to us. Um, can I just uh, thank you, Ollie, because I know that you're meant to be somewhere else at the moment. Uh, so we'll try to keep this um, uh, reasonably compressed today. But if you'd like to speak briefly to the report and then the, the chance for questions. Sure. Thank you, councillors. Um, through the Mayor, so the, um, the, the report that you've got before you just gives you the snapshot of the last quarter uh, from a health and safety performer's point of view. Just a reminder. Uh, obviously, the new legislation that was introduced back in 2016 uh, puts us as governing body sort of um, as due diligence, um, have places due diligence requirements as officers with council. So this is just providing you with a snapshot of what is happening at council, uh, some of the mechanisms that are in place at council and some of the performance um, that is actually that we are seeing in council at the moment. I just want to bring to your attention a couple of items. Uh, in terms of the lost time injury frequency rate, um, as I've said before, we're trying to move away from this rate because it is a failure rate, but it is something that still should be tracked. Um, we have had a bit of an increase in the trend slightly. Um, we had brought the LTFR, um, or the rate itself rather, below the corporate sort of target that we set last year, and it has peaked a little bit. And the reason for that has been uh, a few late reports that have been accumulated over the last few over the last few months. So we counted them um, over September and October, uh, but it is started to come down. So as a trend, it, as a trend, it still remains fairly low. Um, the other issue I want to bring to your attention is obviously as a request from uh, the governing body uh, and certainly from comments made at audit and risk, uh, we wanted to get a much better picture of exactly what was happening with regards to some of the issues around violence. Um, so we have uh, teamed up with our security team, we've now improved the security workflows and we are now gathering uh, all security information and health and safety information through one incident mechanism which makes it much more accurate. But at the end of the day it also gives us a much better ability um, to sort of separate out all the, in all the incidents that we're getting and you will see for the first time sort of some of the clarity around some of the numbers that we're actually getting in this area. Um, those are the two issues I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, the final one was also, um, I know this has been a topic for, for you uh, of concern around uh, health and wellbeing and mental health. Um, so we started rolling out our mental health program um, a couple of months ago. Um, the feedback and the uh, uptake of it has been absolutely phenomenal. It's landed really, really well with our staff and our people leaders are, are finding them extremely useful in terms of going back and, and sort of understanding how this applies to people. So I just wanted to just submit the report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well done. Thank you very much, Ollie. <coughs> I'll move the motion formally. Do I have a seconder, uh, Councillor Hills? Um, let's just try to have a, a number of, a, a small number of questions so Ollie can get to his uh, engagement. But uh, well, first of all, Councillor Hills. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Ollie. Um, just a, I'll just do my quick comment and then a question. Um, just the first comment is, Obviously, thank you so much for the, <clears throat> the work on well-beings and the number of times we've met um, over the years on this. And I've seen the, <clears throat> the efforts you've gone to and your team on, um, you know, ensuring and the work with the Mental Health Foundation and the training and everything that's going on right now. I think it's a phenomenal um, change and benefit to our council and our staff and obviously taking leadership for the city. Um, the, and my question, and I know we've discussed it um, on our own and what we're doing, but how can we get, and I know everyone doesn't want to put it out there, but how can we get a bit of a campaign wider to the f public around the treatment of our staff? So just in a quarter, you know, we're, we're seeing high numbers, and this is reported, and I know talking to a lot of staff that a lot isn't reported, <clears throat> what can we do publicly to actually challenge our community not to treat other community members, staff and contractors, um, with threats, abuse, violence, you know, the stories you've told me I was actually quite shocked about um, members of the public treating our staff, um, you know, in our libraries or on the streets or at um, public transport stations. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Through the Mayor, I, I think it's, um, 
it is a, a difficult one. You know, we 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 face such an enormous part of the of the community out there that that it is a really difficult thing to do. And I think a lot of it sort of um, sort of reflects the society as it's developing. And I think that's something that we've got to bear in mind. But I think the things that would really help from our point of view are, are just those leadership messages. So I think seeing you as council as the governing body um, sort of communicate some of those messages from a leadership point of view, I think would really, really help. Um, I, I know that um, certainly ELT and sort of our senior managers are doing that same leadership messaging within our services. So I think it would be great to, 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 to balance that sort of communication up from a public point of view. Is that something that we can definitely work on? I mean, if I, if I look at, and dare I mention it, if I, if I look at some of the stuff that we've done uh, around the scooters and the public messaging we've done around that, you know, the, the, it's another hazard. Um, but actually, there would, be, there would be an interest in sort of seeing what we can do to balance some of that messaging up. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Casey. Uh, it's been asked. I've uh, been asked already. Councillor Watson. Oh, thank you. Just a, <coughs> a question, Ollie, on the, the wellbeing survey, the 360 survey. So that will pick up on the, the rather disturbing uh, mental health picture from. 2016. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, so the Wellbeing 360 survey um, will be uh, sort of rolled into the engagement survey this year, so it will pick up on the stress and, and the workload elements that are those elements of, yes. Okay, so I just question the timing of that in terms of, you know, February, January when <laughs> people are, are back and, and yeah. they're going to be less stressed. I just wonder then if that's going to be an accurate reflection of um, you know, the workforce in, in full flight at, at that time of year. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that on board. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and, and there, hasn't, there hasn't been a full one in the intervening period either, has there, Ollie? <coughs> since no, that 2016 no, there hasn't. one? No. So 2019, um, I think it's overdue then, isn't it? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Um, if you'll indulge me, I think I just wanted to build on what Ollie said around leadership from our point of view. Um, I think it's it's really behoves us to be able to, you know, treat our staff well because often the public are saying, damn bureaucrats, they're leading you by the night, all these sorts of comments and I hear comments around this table disparaging our staff. And there was one item last week where um, you know our staff's ability, experience and commitment to their task was sorely, you know, really Question. questioned and I didn't realise how much until I got an email from one of that team thanking me for being kind and, and acknowledging the work they'd done and how difficult it was and that email said that um, the rest of the team felt absolutely gutted to be basically slagged off from nearly everyone around the table and so that is a form of bullying to our staff and we need to show some leadership in that regard um, so I think you know, I just support what you say. I think we all have to have a bit of a look at ourselves, the way we behave around the table too, um, to, to give that leadership. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think that's a comment. Um, Councillor Stewart. <coughs> oh, thank you. Just, just on the security um, and, and health, and health and safety, um, as we cross over here, whether we're members of the public or we're, we're um, whoever, I just like yesterday they had the graduation and and just about there must have been about 30 or 40 people out there that were um, like zombies with with the drugs and everything and it was quite concerning and I had I've had numerous phone calls and um, people that have um, texted me about um, feeling very uncomfortable being being at the graduation yesterday. Uh, is there anything that um, through the audit and risk, and, and is there anything that you can suggest that we can do? I know that we have we've got some bylaws for nuisance and the likes, but I think it's something that needs to be addressed really um, very quickly. It's becoming quite a concerning thing. It is um, going through the mayor. I think one of the things that we are certainly doing around our corporate buildings, from Bledisloe House and Albert Street, where we have um, where we have that issue immediately outside our premises and it is affecting our staff. We are looking at sort of deploying extra security around those times. We're looking at trying to engage um, with the people outside of there. So, so we are trying to do that. In terms of the wider security impacts, in terms of some of the civic functions or whatever, I'll have to take that back to Brian Loudon in, in the security team. 
uh, of co what corporate property team, but I can certainly do that. I just think because because yesterday was a graduation day and it was a day where there were a lot of families and young people there, um, <coughs> a lot of them didn't feel very, very safe. And I just think it's really something that we really have to clean up our square, especially the, the, the square. So if you can I'll work on that, that I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, last question, Councillor Walker. Sure. Um, I, I note under the Health and Safety Act, we're deemed officers, when I say uh, we, yep. uh, councillors. How do we fit in terms of health and safety, in terms of our issues, our stress and the like? Uh, are we covered by this? Because technically we're self-employed. <coughs> That's right. Uh, it's, a, it's a really difficult one because, um, yes, the, the definition actually f of yourselves is not, not as employees. However, the, under the Act, there is an others category as well, and you could broadly fit under the others. Um, the reality of the work of council is that you are discharging the work of council. The health and safety work is there to capture work. Um, but it's something that we are working on. Um, it is something we are looking, um, we are working with the Marguerite's department actually on uh, at the moment. So one thing that we actually got, we have in train at the moment is around this violence issue as well for yourselves, because we know that that is an issue. So we're coming up with our first piece of guidance for uh, elected members around how to deal with those sort of issues. So again, it's something that we can certainly look at sort of exploring in, in future, developing some other hazard areas. Yes, yeah, so through you, Mr. Mayor, so I would just make the plea that we do need to be covered, and I'd suggest that that could and should be clarified. Thank you, Councillor. If there are no further questions and comments, um, I just want to, Ollie, on behalf of everybody here, thank you for your passion, your enthusiasm and your commitment to uh, your uh, responsibilities, which comes through every time you give a presentation to us, and on behalf of uh, all of us, wish you a Merry Christmas, and we'll let you get to your meeting. Uh, the motion is to receive the report, to note our duties and to note the report will be referred to local boards. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Carried. Thank you all Thank very much for your leadership. Thank you.